Welcome back to episode 9 of the Quick Resume podcast, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're a bit late. Uh, it's been a bank holiday Monday where we are, and we've all been busy doing different things, playing different get Well, I mean, maybe playing different games. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're, 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 we're here. We're back. Um, my name's Deck. I'm joined by my best bud, my best bud and my co-host, Timmy. Um, Hello. How are you doing, buddy? How's the week been for you? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm doing good. Um... Yeah, as you said, it's been a, a nice long bank holiday weekend. Uh, not too much game playing uh, over the weekend, mainly, mainly sort of family stuff. But um, but yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm a little bit a little bit tired. I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be the sleepiest yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we had sleepy episode, but this is sleepy uh, episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think we've both been kind of busy. I think I think this week in terms of um, playing games, I think it's kind of been pretty chill uh from from both our ends to be honest um i mean i've been sort of getting back into uh apex a little bit uh apex legends because we did take a, a break from that to play outriders and then we moved on to monsanto rise when we realized outriders was not finished um <laughs> and yeah. um so yeah i've been sort of getting back into uh apex getting my twitchy shooter back on uh because the new season nine is dropping tomorrow so hey. um for any apex legend players listening um, yeah he's got the bug yeah it's pretty cool i do i do enjoy apex and this season does look pretty cool they're adding quite a lot of new stuff a whole new game mode um a whole new legend a new weapon i'm pretty sure actually this is the biggest update ever right with a new weapon new legend and new game mode right yeah oh yeah yeah comfortably yeah uh, yeah it's definitely there and a map update, update uh, a couple of yes deaths. yeah which looks really cool actually the the, the new map update yeah. very funky it's like like plants taking over and stuff it looks yes. really cool yeah it's sort of corrupted um, and stuff yeah yeah so yeah i've been kind of getting back into that um and that's basically all all i've been playing um i'm sort of thinking i've been watching a lot of gameplay on um resident evil 8 as well uh, i say watching gameplay because you have to have a fucking playstation to play the demos mm. um imagine so being I such have... a loser that you made a demo exclusive it's so bad isn't it it's like i i, I want to know if i want to buy their product for 65 pounds or however much it is but i actually i don't have the option <laughs> it's really weird know. because it's it it's like the sort of thing that an exec would do if they were like a console warrior. They'd be like, oh, well, let's make a demo exclusive. This will make yeah. them rabid. It's just such a weird thing. I mean, they did it for um, Monster Hunter World as well. I oh, know it was a beta. Exclusive beta. Yeah. Imagine that. I think it's we quite eventually got, to do that. We eventually got something for World, though, but, um, pre, pre-release, didn't we? We, we definitely uh, tried it a bit, I think. I don't think we did. I don't think we did because I remember being really pissy at the time because on Xbox when World launched, there was like a couple of bugs here and there. Um, and I was like, well, there's oh, okay. no beta. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to... Yeah. It, it, it's so it's so stupid, especially when you put it that way. Like, there genuinely could be issues with the game that because it's on a different platform. Yeah. Um, but you don't know those issues because you haven't... It's you know, you have to shit. rely on You have to rely on in-house testing, which, let's be honest, doesn't doesn't cover all the bases like yeah i condemn um, it from anyone if phil spencer tries to pull that shit i won't be happy yeah, everybody we'll stop doing that it. shit yeah stop we'll definitely doing call that. that shit out we're, we're not being fanboys if xbox did the same thing uh and um with one of their games we were like demos exclusive i i would hop i would get on xbox's fucking it's demos like, like why it's stupid like um but yeah so that's annoying but regardless i've been sort of watching the gameplay of it and it looks mm-hmm. pretty cool um, and I'm kind of thinking about buying it. Um, so, um, and I was just discussing with you before we started this episode as well, that might um, delay the episode by like a day. I think we, we normally uh, whip up the episodes on a Friday, but it comes out on the Friday. So like, oh, yeah. um, I think, which is also really cool, a game coming out on a Friday. I love that. It's nice, I really isn't it? love that. Um, and I think that's because it's just a finished product. It's know? a Capcom. It's just a, it's just a single player game. Uh, yes. Yeah, Resident is Capcom. I think for some reason yeah. in my head, maybe it's because they're a Japanese company, they release their games on a Friday. I don't know if that affects it. I don't know. Perhaps, or maybe it's just the fact that it's just it's just a complete product of the game, right? It's just a single player. It's not like live service. You know, if anything goes wrong, they need to fix it midweek or something. Oh, I, I, I guess, but like for those launch weeks, they have people in over the weekend anyway, don't they? So True. Very true. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah yeah so i'm kind of looking forward to that cool. uh, and if i do decide to get that then yeah we might do qr on like a saturday or a sunday or something and i can give you a small little um a small little timmy opinion on yeah the game. That, um, that'd be great um, and what's your everyone um, values what's your like prediction what's your like score prediction i think it's gonna even out around like an an 80s i think mid 80s i actually think it's gonna do pretty well wicked um i'd say like i'd say 85 plus i think uh, I, th- I think if it's on the lower end of, uh, of the 80s, I'd be quite surprised. I think it'll be the higher end. Because um, it, it looks pretty cool. Um, and I think the premise of it is is very cool as well. Um, you know, they're going into like vampires and werewolves and all this kind of shit. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have a fucking clue, dude. Resident Evil is one of those franchises that's just a blind spot. You know, it's like Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil. All my friends speak about them. I know nothing mm. about any of them. It's such a blind spot. Yeah, and I guess Fallout until recently. <laughs> but you yeah. kind of uh, got, yeah, yeah, you're got not, onto that bandwagon. You, you're, you're not on the podcast with the right person to be speaking about Resident Evil. But, I mean, it looks. Yeah. Quite, I, I saw a little bit of gameplay a couple of weeks back. And it looked quite smooth, actually, because some of the trailers I saw a while ago, I was a bit, like, I don't know, like, it looks a bit weird. Like, it looks a bit janky. Uh, yeah, it looks, like, it looks like it's come together a bit. Um, the gameplay kind of looks pretty cool. It's, yeah, it looks pretty first cool. Person, very... isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's weird. It's, yeah. it's very. They, it's like same engine, same sort of combat system as uh, Biohazard, the previous Resident Evil. Um, mm. So, and it's actually the same character. You play as the same um, protagonist as well. Oh, which is right. Quite interesting to see how that. I think I think in this one, like your daughter's been taken or something. I don't know because in the last one it was your girlfriend or something like that. But um, they'll, they'll they'll dive into it. Yeah, it's pretty unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's quite interesting how it all tie into like Umbrella Corporation because you still I know see that their, their logo everywhere. Like Raccoon like, City. Yeah, I know that. Look at you. I know. Let's I know. go. Um, yeah, so that's quite a long update for me. But yeah, that's sort of. Um, Awesome. what i've been doing and sort of what i'm yeah sort of planning to do for the rest of the week uh, i thought it was worth mentioning because obviously it comes out on the friday and you know no it's, it is worth mentioning definitely um but yeah how about how about you how's your week been and what, what have you been doing gaming wise yeah well I, I mean um i i went up to um my partners see my partner's family also so you know my in-laws had a beautiful little um, baby girl, so we went up and saw her. Yeah, it was lovely. Um, so you know, I took my switch up and everything, and so I haven't, I haven't been playing that much over the weekend really. But I did. I was playing um, Zelda. I, I keep dipping in and out of Zelda, and I think it's like the worst way to play it. But because yeah. you just, you just forget everything. You're like, oh, what the fuck was I doing? God. Uh, yeah. But it's whatever. So I, I just dipped in and out of that. But like in terms of like what I actually did do, like throughout the week before we went on the weekend, um, uh, I completed Hollow Knight, and I know this this i think did i say i completed it last week i don't think i had i think i was right at the end last week yeah um, you hadn't completed it last week yeah but fuck me man hollow knight was what a surprise what an absolute pleasant surprise you, you, you can listen to my journey throughout the podcast of being like <laughs> i'll play the beginning of it i'm not that impressed i'm gonna give it another go no neck and then next week being like oh it's all right actually the week after like wow this is pretty good <laughs> finally like what wow what a fucking stunner um yeah, I um, what a game! Yeah, I had such a good time. If, if Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a ten, uh, Hollow Knight is a, is a nine. Um, that's kind of on my on my scale, but it was it was fucking good. Um, yeah, it was fucking good. It was it like obviously it was like a you know I said last week it was like it's the best Dark Souls bug game out there. Um, and then, you know it's clear inspiration from Souls um, in all the best and all the worst ways. Um, but I think it's it, I didn't the platforming wasn't its strong suit. I don't think, and um, I think yeah, I said last week, but I think there needed to be a bit more um, fast travel here and there because it was a bit laborious having to like drag your um, geo around sometimes. It was just, ugh, but yeah, but yeah, other than that, yeah, it was so good. I'm I'm dead excited for Silk Song whenever that comes out. Um, I might even have it on my fantasy critic, but I I, th- I thought it didn't have a release date. I didn't even think it had. No, a, I think I think it's still TBA. Like, it is. It could be this year, but. Because those sort of things do just tend to just pop up. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, the indie game sequel, Hollow Knight, so it's, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's something you might actually see at like E3. Right, yeah, um, I was going to say, it wouldn't surprise me yeah. at all. Um, I, don't, uh, who, I don't know who published the first one. Um, um, I do, but I, I can't remember. Uh, uh, it would take a quick Google from me. 
Yeah, that's yeah. I'm trying to do it as well. well. I mean, I know it's Kickstarter, so I mean, maybe it's just self-published, right? Uh, potentially. Um, developer was Team Cherry. Yeah, yeah, I know and, it's Team Cherry, but uh, it doesn't say anything about. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just self-published because it was. But it wouldn't surprise me if they actually got published by an actual <laughs> publisher. What? One of the first questions when you Google it is, "Why is Hollow Knight so bad?" <laughs> <laughs> like, what? It is the question. <laughs> Jesus. It is the question. Wow. Yeah, man. So th- there's that. I completed Hollow Knight, and that was fucking stunning. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, I haven't really been playing Apex much with you. I just hadn't really been in the mood. I just kind of wanted to finish Hollow Knight. Um, and obviously, like we finished the Battle Pass on that ages ago. So I, I just, I just wasn't really feeling it. Um, in terms of other stuff, I'm like, I'm kind of so. I guess this is another... I don't know why I have so many gaming blind spots, but I never played any of the Mass Effect games, and I know that's like a cardinal sin to be an Xbox gamer and and have had not played any of the Mass Effect games. Um, Yeah. And obviously the... uh, What's it called? Definitive Edition or whatever it is comes out like next week or something on the 14th. So I'm I'm contemplating getting it and just playing through them. Um, I imagine the first one probably hasn't aged all that well. Yeah. But... I just feel like people speak so well of it that I probably need to give it a go. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I played the first one and it, it, it was pretty good. Uh, not sure if I played it through to completion, but I I, I, I sunk a, a healthy amount of hours into it to get you know an understanding of of what they were going for. Um, and yeah, it was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure how well it will age because the combat is quite quite simplistic. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's all about the sort of the all the dialogue and story options and all the characters you come across and stuff like that. You know, like so, some of the characters you encounter and have as like party members and stuff like doing like their backstories and figuring out who they are is like mm. pretty much a game in itself sometimes, um, which is yeah. quite cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, well, uh, I didn't realize the um, definitive edition was coming out so soon. It's going to be Bioware's lifeline, isn't it? This the, the uh, definitive edition. They're going to yeah. be on the chopping block, well, you know, half to Anthem and then whatever else. Um, well, and so. they even their latest. They, they they've they've not been Andromeda. Doing great. Yeah, yeah. And Andromeda was sucky as well. Um, yeah. They haven't had the uh, they haven't had the best streak. Um, Bioware no, as no. as as of late, <clears throat> and they've lost their passion a little bit. So yeah, I'm I'm considering dipping into that and maybe trying that out. I mean, it's it's going to be kind of full price, so that's the only thing keeping me back. It's kind of that thing now. Whenever I have to buy a game, I'm like, oh really? I'm just so spoiled by <laughs> games pass and not having to buy stuff. Yeah, it's been a while um, since I've dropped a sort of full price. Um, I know price tag on something to be to be honest. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm kind of the same. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, and then the other thing that happened, kind of in the that I, I kind of just wanted to touch on um, is that the there was a Ratchet and Clank state of play um, this week. Uh, so obviously like sort of, you know, big 15 minute chunky gameplay. Sony do these really well. Um, I don't know why everybody doesn't just start. I don't know why Xbox doesn't just do this. Just literally give it a name, call it Xbox Direct, whatever. Just Sony's yeah. really good at just like letting games talk for them you know yeah they just like yeah, they put do. game plan everyone's yeah. like wow that looks fucking great and then everybody speaks yeah. about it um and it did you know it looked fantastic like i was a bit skeptical of kind of the demos before because everybody was like whoa there's so many like worlds how, how, you know running at once the ssd and i said like, but it's not really like you know they're kind of like on rails just going through and i'm still like yet to be convinced but it was like a step in the right direction but yeah, i mean like that, that's just of like that part of the technology being applied to the game overall it looked really good um yeah, there was like one point where i was watching it and i genuinely i thought i was watching like a tv show like it was, yeah. like, it was like I was watching a Pixar movie, you know, because the animation yeah. was just so smooth, so subtle, so crisp. Um, yeah, man. So I mean, that's gonna be that's that re- that really is the first big like next gen game. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I'm sure some people will say it's Demon Souls. I don't really think it yeah. is. It's, it, it's a remake. You know, I know they did it from the ground up. Whatever. We've all well, you know, I, whatever. I I don't think that that's like so much. But this, however, is obviously a 
um, a sequel in a popular franchise is just exclusive yeah. to PS5. Um, for better or worse, you know, I don't know if that will hurt the sales of the game. It's like um, Return. I mean, obviously Return just came out as well, and that was um, PS5 exclusive only, but it's kind of a bit of a smaller... G- well, I mean, it wasn't that small in the end, but it's a bit smaller. Um, yeah. yeah. So that was just that was just exciting, man, because um, sooner or later... Xbox is going to start spitting up, spitting out stuff as well, and not even just Xbox, like you know, multi-platform games as well. Uh, yeah, multi-platform games that are going to start coming out just for next gen. Um, yeah, that's just going to be exciting as well. Um, but you know, I hope I hope Pratchett and Clank kills it. I think I've got it on my Metacritic, on my um, fancy critic actually. So you do. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it will. Um, it will yeah. do really well. I think it's the sort of game that will do. Um, you know, be a solid eight at least. Um, it, it's a very At loved least. franchise, and yeah. it looks it looks fantastic. Like, like you said, it's, in, it's uh, Insomniac. Insomniac don't make bad games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, they really bad. don't. Yeah, and and this is just right up their alley. Like this sort of like you said, just lovely, um, like animation and just almost like cartoony um, sunset overdrive isn't it? style. Yeah, yeah, like it's just their bread and butter, really. Um, so yeah yeah it definitely does look pretty cool um and yeah on on, on that little topic as well yeah returnal was uh did, did pretty shit hot as well like right out of the gates didn't it it did do really well quite, quite surprising i was very very up and down about that game i was not sure how that game would perform like i was just like bad good like every time i watched it i was like i don't know yeah well i mean the pedigree of the devs is quite good i mean i knew that game because it's house mark and they did I mean, i've never played it but i know of that they made resogun and then resogun was like a 2d like shooter on ps4 and it was really pretty and really good and they did um did they do something else i can't remember but they i think i'm sure they've done another sort of like high profile indie game um so the you know the guys there are clearly very talented the guys and girls there um but yeah i was a bit up and down on it as well and i think the review after as the reviews have gone out the score has ticked down a bit like it's sitting at 85 which i mean obviously it's a bloody brilliant score you know for a new ip or whatever like shooting into next gen and all of that you know that's couldn't ask for, for much more really um but yeah i mean it did fantastic it's quite it, it's got a bit of a mixed reception i know i know obviously a5 is a good score but whenever i read about it online there's this things about it's obviously like a it's just a roguelike um yeah and some people are saying like the loops are too punishing yeah i heard and, people say it was a bit too long the runs are really, really and that long. is fucking annoying like there's no save system or anything so like you know if you die that's it and there are times where you have long play sessions die and have nothing to show for it um which is obviously not which what you does want. yeah that would that would turn you off as a as a gamer it's almost like playing an rpg and getting really far and then like f- you forget to save it and you get like knocked back and you're like oh yeah <laughs> you just, like, close Christ, the game and beat something yeah. else up yeah yeah and then um, there has been some issues of it crashing as uh, being crashing at some point so i say just it compounds it a little bit doesn't it imagine crashing halfway into a run like oh just resets it yeah yeah that'd be a pain in the ass um but yeah no it um it's it definitely um has done really really well uh but i mean let's not forget 70 quid <sighs> yes <laughs> that is that's very very hefty isn't it it's um, just nuts i don't think i would like like sure it looks great i've watched i've seen gameplay of it and obviously the reviews are fantastic but like I don't know. I still don't think. Yeah, I don't know it, either. Like, it, it's not. I don't think it's a seventy seventy pound price tag for me. Exactly. Personally. It's one of those ones that you do um and are about a bit. Like Ratchet and Clank, you have no doubts. You know what you're getting from yeah. it. Like it's very solid. Returnal is a bit more experimental, but because like yeah, like the reviews and kind of like the opinions of it are a bit more mixed. Despite the good scores, it's like I don't. This is a lot of money to drop for a game that might piss me off in three play sessions. You know. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just tough. It's, it's so tough. yeah, it's it's very expensive. Um, but yeah, like you said, you don't have an issue with something like Ratchet Clank or or even the upcoming Resi game. Like you kind of know what you're getting. Um, you know, you 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 get a story. Um, but yeah, with you just don't know how how you'll react to a game like Returnal uh, until you actually play it. Yeah. Um, and it, seventy quid is just—it's so expensive these days, especially yeah. for our Xbox gamers with the uh, Games Pass hack. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely yeah. yeah, it's definitely right up my alley though. Like I think I think if I did have a PS5 and I had like no like budgetary concerns at all, really, like I'd be all over it, sort of thing. Um, 
you know, like psychological sci-fi, like, oh, that's sick. Yeah, rogue, like, I love roguelikes. Like, you know, I think they can be done badly yeah. and well, but, you know, well, you know, well, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it ages, but, you know, yeah, like you said, it appears to have done really, really well out the gate. So, um, good yeah. job, um, Housemark and Sony Studios. It's always yeah. nice to see a new IP do well. Yeah, good job, guys. Wicked, wicked, wicked. All right, well, is there, is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we sort of run through a couple of the, of the stories for this week? Uh, no, no, that was a that was a nice lengthy intro from, from <laughs> the both of us. Um, so yeah, no, always is all, all good. Cool. All right. Well, I wanted to start. Um, I, I swapped the the order of some of this stuff around because I figured we might as well start with the biggest one first. Um, and a lot of this is kind of like uh, you know uh, Xbox Game Studios, either updates or speculation type stuff. But it just never gets old. Maybe that's why that's maybe that's why we're doing a podcast because to us because to us it never gets old. Right. Maybe to everyone else it does in fact get old very quickly. <laughs> Got old on episode one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they're talking about Starfield again for fuck's sake. Um, and it was about Forza Horizon Five. Like, we had initially thought a lot of the rumors were suggesting that maybe it was going to be in Japan. Well, that's fun stuff. But it's all but confirmed now that it's going to be in Mexico. Um, Everybody, yeah, a lot of a lot of insiders have said it and said it, and um, it's it, yeah, like I said, it's it's, it's all but confirmed. Um, and there's a lot of excitement about that as well. Like Mexico has a lot of different biomes. You know, be a lot of people are quite excited to go back to that kind of not England. Yeah, where it's great. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, so um, that that's generated quite a lot of excitement. And obviously, Xbox kind of has quite a strong presence in in Mexico. They did the um, what do they call it? Uh, inside Xbox? No. Yeah, yeah. The inside so, Xbox. Yeah. They did the inside Xbox 2019, maybe in Mexico, and because they love like Gears of War is really, really popular um, in Mexico. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's, it sounds cool. good to me. Yeah, yeah. Mexico is a very beautiful place. I'm sure it will look lovely. Um, yeah. Reimagined inside a of a beautiful driving game, as all Forza games are. Yeah, um, if, whether we'll see it this year is still a big question mark. But um, I wonder if they'll do make it cross um, cross gen actually, or if they'll just do it next gen. Uh, uh, I think I think they'll probably do cross gen. I think they probably um, will as well. I think Fours is too big a title to just to just suddenly bottleneck into the new generation. I think yeah. it's a lot of people off. It also could generate more sales for next gen, sure. But like, I think it would annoy a lot of people as well. Um, Mm. You know, it's it's a really it's a really big <clears throat> title um, for Xbox. And it, so, in my yeah. in my head, like these like the racing games, I know maybe maybe Forza Horizon less so than Forza. Um, it's easier to scale, like they're quite easy to scale in my head, of like because you're like driving quite quick, you can just like scale textures and and like asset quality up and down quite easily for like um lower power machines and stuff you yeah. compare something like you know um i don't know like hellblade or whatever where it's like it's going to be like you know very graphically demanding with like animation work and stuff like that yeah um, i feel like there's a different kettle of fish but i mean that Plus, actually gone oh i was gonna say like like you mentioned it going like high speeds and stuff like that if you're smart enough you know you can sort of uh cover all that up with like motion blur and, motion blur uh, and yeah stuff. we love motion we all blur. love it I, mean, I love it in a, yeah. in a shooter it's my yeah. favorite <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you can't see shit when you're spinning around yeah, fucking, fucking yeah in a shooter if you have motion blur or aim acceleration i fucking i want the option to turn it off or i'll burn your studio to <laughs> He will. He'll do it. <laughs> I hate it. I hate aim acceleration. Yeah. Like, sorry. Why? And from turning in real life, I don't speed up as I turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a console thing, isn't it? The thing is, it is weird though because like a lot of games that you w- like, one of them is like Overwatch, for example. Overwatch has aim acceleration. I like Destiny, obviously as well. But some of them they feel fine. Um, and I think I said to you the other day, you know, it depends how much aim smoothing, like how how well they do the smoothing and stuff. Um, yeah. In some games, it's just not there, and it just feels like yeah, you go from zero to a hundred over like a half a second turning, and it's like what the fuck was that? That that wasn't yeah. smooth at all, and that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel like Destiny does it well because it's got and it's got good like aim assist as well, and the enemies are chunky enough to to hit quite convincingly all the time. So you kind of everything kind of just magnets onto what you're looking at anyway even if your speed is quite high so you don't really notice it as much it's just a bit more smoothed out 
Um, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I, I, I can't remember what shooter it was. It might have even been the new Dino shooter we've been playing, Second Extinction, which we should have oh, mentioned yeah. actually. We oh, we should have, yeah. And we did, we did play that we, this week. <laughs> we still can. Let's do a quick one. Yeah, so we played yeah. Second Extinction. Um, it's good, but it's also not great at the same time. Um, yeah, it's 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 fine. It, yeah, I mean, it's early yeah. access. There are some there are some technical issues. Um, there are some like obviously I think the the real the main gripe we had with it was the aiming like. I felt like the auto aim is really weird. It like pulls you onto random objects behind enemies all the time. The aim assist, like, yeah. Yeah, if I'm like shooting like a dino and there's, I don't know, there's just something in the background, even if it's just like a, just an object, like a wall or a pillar or a pylon or something like that, for whatever reason, my aim assist pulls me away from the dinosaur yeah, consistently. It's, it's so saying, weird. Look at this. Um, and it's it's weird. Like you you actually actively fight the aim assist. Yeah, I've, I've never seen that before. It's so peculiar. Um, it's it, it's odd. Um, but it, it's definitely it's a, it's a super fun game. Um, I do enjoy it. Um, I think it has some cool stuff going for it for sure. Um, yeah, and it looks it looks gorgeous and runs really smooth. Um, yeah, and it, you know it. I think it. Yeah, yeah, like it definitely had this potential there for sure. I quite like a lot of like the mechanics and the you know it's got like that uh, the hero shooter kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's like Left 4 Dead meets you know shooty shooty like arc, <laughs> shooty shooty yeah. dino arc kind of thing. You yeah, know, yeah. without any survival elements, obviously. You know, I just I literally just mean dinosaurs. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's it's fun to play with your friends. Like it needs a bit more filling out, I think, in in terms of like what's going on in the maps because the maps are quite big. They've got like this whole open world thing going but yeah. we're not open it's like an open level um and yeah yeah no it, it seemed cool first impressions were pretty good um yeah and i'm excited to see how it how it develops but yeah that's my take yeah the so i didn't expect the sonic um crossover with how fast your characters move <laughs> yeah that was you're that so was fast <laughs> you're yeah. so fast you yeah. literally run at like 40 miles an hour. <laughs> maybe you why. are a velociraptor. Like maybe that's it. <laughs> you look down, you got raptor legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, you you genuinely outrun the dinosaurs. Like I, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, no, it is weird. It's kind it's kind of weird. I feel like I'm playing a Halo custom game. <laughs> they like turn yeah. up the speed. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just, it's just weird that nobody mentions it like in the game. It's like, "Oh, by the way, you're just this quick and that's yeah. just that's just how quick you are." Yeah, you're a messy human. There's no yeah, there's no like canon for us uh, by the way because we're dropping you into a, an earth you know literally infested by dinosaurs here's like some leg serums you know like <laughs> humans have evolved with yeah, this exactly. now we can we can run it we run this yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. but yeah yeah little, little quick segment on that it's fun um we're having fun on it um it, it does get quite old quite quick um there needs to be a little bit more uh, to it but like you said it's early access and uh you know the game was clearly made just to be quite fun and i think it, it does that job quite well so i found i think the difficulty is a bit weird as well like sometimes it's like most of the time we kind of breeze through most i don't think we've we've done it on like the hardest difficulty but we've done it on hard and it was still kind of really easy peasy yeah. so that needs scaling as well so yeah there are things like that that just need tweaking but there there is a fun game there um and it performs really well which is other than the auto aim thing which mm. is nice for a, for an early access game um, yeah, I mean, we had a mate that struggled on his base Xbox oh, with yeah, the that, gore and mm, stuff like that. But, yeah, you know, that is a base Xbox. I, I think if you're running it on a on an Xbox One X or a, or anything higher than a base Xbox, you'll 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 see better performances uh, even even then. You know, yeah, just our definitely. mate is just <laughs> a cheapskate, a troglodyte. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah, no no performance issues from um, from our end using the X's. Awesome. Well, that's Second Extinction, um, mm. and that's also Forza Horizon Five. Um, Obsidian as well. Do you know how bonkers Obsidian are? Do you know that they're out uh, of their mind maniacs? <laughs> what and just just <laughs> what they're trying to accomplish? Well, they're just they're just they've got so many games going at the moment. You know, so we we know of like three. We know there's Avowed. We know there's Grounded. Um, and what's the other one? We know there's going to be an Outworlds too. That's going to be ground. Needs to be put in the ground. <laughs> yeah, well, right, yeah. <laughs> Go work on Elder Scrolls Six Bug Edition. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so we know they're doing three, and then like other members of the team, they're doing two other games alongside that. They're only a team of like 180. I don't understand. That's crazy. Mental. 
if you yeah. consider 343 three, is like 400 500 employees obsidian's like 108 it's like less than half the size and they're working on five times the games <laughs> i know halo yeah. is halo and it, you know you, you know it takes a lot of stuff um they're just yeah. they're just mental over there i guess that's just yeah it's supposed, pretty crazy yeah. yeah it's supposedly they um like one of the guys who's doing one of the newer games uh i think it's josh sawyer i couldn't tell you what other games he's directed but i i think he's quite a popular bloke um he's doing like a non-violent rpg kind of thing he said he's wanted to do something like that for a while um that's like kind of all we know um but yeah they're just they're just mental man they're just doing so much yeah it's kind of like it's it's cool and it's great they're, they're a talented um studio but like also i don't know it's it, it's it's almost a bit like i hope they're not spreading themselves too thin um i hope they, they've got enough um workforce um on these on these big titles you know because i can't imagine something something like avowed is is a is a big yeah is a big project right um but you know um, well, they're still recruiting they're, they're you know yeah yeah exactly so they're, they're still they're, recruiting. all of xbox studios are just sizing up so yeah. and, and, and i'm sure they're smart enough to to know like we said they're, they're a talented studio i'm sure they're smart enough to know how to allocate their resources and and do these things properly yeah um but yeah yeah i mean part of me part of me thinks that they you know they got given a blank check from phil and they're like oh my god (laughs) let's just let's make all of it they're like which one all of them (laughs) make all of them (laughs) just everything yeah Yeah. what was that thing you told me about at lunch today john yeah let's make it yeah (laughs) sounds good (laughs) let's fucking make it. tuna sandwich rpg (laughs) get on it (laughs) we got the dollar yeah uh yeah but hey good for them yeah good for them man I, I, I like that they're able to uh, to make these projects come to life and, you know, um, have a lot of their ideas uh, down on paper. You know, they're actually able to make them and stuff like that. Yeah, so. definitely. Well, I mean, as well, I think it is kind of... It's my understanding that for a lot of game development, they, like... They will have, like, incubation teams. So they have, like, small teams of, like, five or six go away, you know, work on the design or whatever, you know, if it's feasible, prototype. And then, yeah, you know, the team dark. size... And then the team size grows. So if they're like, okay, that looks, like, that's good. And then the team size grows around it. So, um, yeah, maybe well, it's not that always, surprising. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a project always starts with an idea and concept art and stuff like that. Yeah, for that sure. Kind of, that kind of brings the vision. And then, you know, they're like, this is fucking cool. Um, and then they allocate more resource to it. Or yeah, like, right. This, this fucking sucks, bro. Get back and work on a vowed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Get back in your cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Skyrim like on the market now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. So that's that, Obsidian. That's cool. good, good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Next up, we've got Maybe Rise 2. I think I've, we've spoken about this in the sh- on the show before, but it's like a, it's a rumor that. It keeps coming and going. Um, so, you know, Insider um, Special Ed from uh, Xbox Era um, said that Rise 2 could be in development at Crytek um, on his podcast last weekend. Um, so we kind of missed the news cycle on this because of the day we put up the podcast, but whatever. Um, and, but he, and he also said that possibly it could be multiplat, which would be really weird. Be really weird. So I'm assuming... Weird. I'm assuming I'm I'm assuming Xbox don't own the IP. Um but I mean this was info this is info from 2019 so this info is 2 years old so I mean who knows but there, he seems to have information that suggests that Rise 2 is possibly in development. Um and I've still got Rise 2 uh, sorry Rise sitting in my um in my backlog from a games with gold like 4 years ago. One day I'll yeah. play it. I mean, <laughs> if a Rise yeah, 2 gets announced I'll play it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a good game. I'd I, I'd like to see a rise too. Uh, I mean, I can't actually remember where I I, I completed Rise. Um, it's not saying much. It's like a four hour game, yeah. but I I did complete Rise when it first came out, uh, and I had fun. It was, it was really cool. Um, I quite enjoyed it, but it's I can't remember where it left off, and if it would be a continuation or whether or not they just they just be like, here's another character in another timeline, you know, like Assassin's Creed style. Yeah, you know, where they're like, you can just play this general from this timeline, and he's pillaging and raping these people. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I don't really know, but it's um, I I would I would like to see another one, and I'm pretty sure they would take on board all the um, cri- criticism that they got from the first one. 
uh, with it being repetitive and stuff like that because it definitely looked cool it definitely had the cool factor to it like the the executions and the combat was very cool um but just you know you saw a lot of the same executions over and over again there could have just been a bit more um to it but i'd like to see it i'd like yeah. to see a sequel yeah, I mean, from what I, like I said, I haven't played it, but from what I understand, people actually thought the story and the setting was all kind of cool. Um, yeah. And it apparently, again, haven't played it, but the ending was on a bit of a cliffhanger in that regard. So, um, you know. I can't remember it, in all honesty. It was such a long time ago. Yeah, um, I don't know. But don't yeah, know. yeah, it could have been. Um, but yeah, yeah nice. but I think it's, 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 it's something that I think a lot of people would like to see. I mean, we don't get many, like, you know, like Roman warrior, like, kind of games. I mean. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Rise is basically our our God of War. Like, yeah, it's so similar. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the same. Exactly, it's the same caliber. In fact, probably better. Probably, I'd probably say the protagonist that I can't even remember his name is is cooler than Kratos. Is he called <laughs> like Mary Mary Marius? Ma- Marius? A... I think it was Marius. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, like <laughs> Mario and his goombas. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good man that, thank you nice. yeah well that was um well because the thing is as well with rise wasn't it like, i think part of the reason it was so balked is because they pulled out well like it was meant to be like a fully connect game wasn't it when it first got announced it was like a, you know you're like have your hand out with the sword and you like swing it around Ugh. and shit and at some point cried were like we're not gonna do this you know because there were some connect features in there uh like you could like shout and like call in arrows i remember yeah um, you could, yeah and things like that. So it was in there, you know, it was like, you know, cute, like gimmicky stuff. Uh, but originally, the, the whole game was based around the idea of swinging your arms around, to, you know, to fight. It was first person, I remember. Yeah. Uh, so they, they must have had like a one year turnaround to be like, no, we need to make this um, yeah. third person and playable with a controller. Um, so, yeah, Rise 2 obviously won't have that limitation. Um, so that's yeah. potentially quite exciting. Yeah, no, de- yeah, de- definitely. There were some very talented uh, hands behind it. It was it was cool. I liked it. Cool. Um, so up next, um, we have more shelf nonsense. Um, <sighs> yeah, I know. F- Phil Spencer was on a um, he was on a something. Can't remember what he was on a something. He was, was on a show. Hype. He was yeah. He was on a show um, for something. I think it was accessibility for gamers or something. Um, that that's what's sounding right. Um, and he's obviously, you know, the, the <laughs> legendary shelf was behind him, and a couple of things have moved. So if there wasn't already enough, you know, of a confirmation that Phil is fucking with all of us, um, he is. Um, <laughs> and, Always is. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of like some things that were there, because this is really like, you know, what all podcasters are going to be speaking about all the time. It's just going to be Phil Shelf, and I'm proud to be part of the Phil Shelf army, and you should too. Um, mm-hmm. There's a Vault Boy that's appeared there, a Red Dead Redemption 2 collector's box, a Watch Dogs Legion mask is there. A lot. I mean, that was there last time as well, I think. But um, Yeah, yeah, that's been there for a while, I think. Oh, yeah, I know, I've said in my notes, actually, yeah, Watch Dogs Legion mask is still there, along with the Kojima Productions um, Luden mascot, which means nothing to me, but I know it was there last time as well, so people were just pointing out what's kind of still there, uh, and obviously last time there's been speculation of that being tied to a Kojima partnership in a game but who really knows Red Dead Redemption 2 potentially back in Games Pass who knows Um, but the big takeaway which will kind of roll into the next few stories um, is that there seems to be well seems to be seems to be a Mandalorian Funko Pop there Hmm. okay Mandalorian so um this comes again uh, same guy from before uh, from special ed um the insider over at xbox era forums um said that uh, the that mandalorian funko was in the in the last picture that we all saw whenever he did his la- phil's last uh, shelf tease strip tease um yeah. but, he, but he asked his insider if he could mention it and he got the okay um so there is a mandalorian uh, thing there and allegedly someone is making a mandalorian game but we don't know who yet and we don't know if it that has anything be, to do with Xbox. That would be cool. Yeah, man. I've been, I've been meaning be to watch it. Cool. But, I mean, it's right. Doesn't it? Uh, everyone's been saying it. Ever since, like, LucasArts have, like, you know, started putting their IPs on the market. Everyone's been saying, you know, obviously Mandalorian game, that would, that's, a, like, a perfect fit. But hmm. get the Coalition to make a Mandalorian game. That's oh, a perfect yeah. fit. That's a, exactly right. Yeah. 
So I could fucking see that. That would be that would be great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I, I guess the sense is going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really just. I'm like just picturing it. Mm. Just putting a Mandalorian helmet on Marcus Felix right now. <laughs> just, just picturing everything. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> everything he's doing. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. But, so. No. So then here is the plot twist in the whole thing that happened. Um, the web crawlers went through it. They had to look at. They had to look a bit more at the photo and some other things. And it turns out it might be an Arbiter Funko Pop, and not Mandalorian. However, Fuck. however, <laughs> the, so the guy who like said this on Twitter again, Special Eddie, was like, I think I might have just screwed over my insider <laughs> because it turns out that there is a Mandalorian game genuinely in in uh, development. Oh, okay, but because he thought it was being um, teased on the shelf, he said it publicly, but. Not realising that it wasn't that. Um, Phil needs a better fucking camera so we can see what the hell he's he's wanting to. Yeah. Oh, that's that's funny. So. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, you know, Mando um, seems to be in talks to, with some degree at Xbox, um, and this kind of ties into our next story, really, um, which is pos- the possibility of Xbox working with Lucas Lucas Arts or Lucas Games um, for another game. Um, and Matty from the Defining Duke podcast, that's another popular Xbox podcast. I presume if you're listening to this, you probably also know who they are. They do a much higher budget podcast than we whoa. do. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, dude. Yeah, sorry, sorry. How sorry. expensive I am to get here. Yeah, you do cost a lot. I you do. do cost a lot. Um... Yeah, it heard, so he heard that there's another first-party studio that's working on a Lucasfilm IP. Um, and all we know is that it's not Machine Games, um, because Machine Games are making um, Indiana Jones, which is obviously another LucasArts IP. So this might line up. You know, If there's already... Um, machine Games are already making Indiana Jones, he's saying there's someone else that's making... There's another Xbox studio that's making a Lucasfilm game. This might line up with somebody making a Mando, a Mandalorian game. Um, yeah. So, you know, he's also heard that Xbox is taking kind of a, a Lucasfilm approach as a bit of a counterpunch to Sony, you know, leaning towards Marvel a little bit. Um, which I think is a bit ridiculous to put it on the same plat- uh, like, you know, battleground because it's Marvel is much, well, it is. I mean, come on, it is. Like, Marvel's a lot bigger than like, Lucasfilm IPs. Like, yes, Star Wars is big. Like, yes, Indiana Jones is kind of big what else is there like monkey island they're monkey island didn't they lucas arts that's yeah, kind of yeah, like a, a cult classic but you know none of that is the same level as, as marvel maybe like 20 years ago before the cinematic universe kicked off like yeah um yeah. but now probably not but but i mean still like i think star wars has always had a place in like video games hasn't it you know from night to the old republic that i mean i haven't played it but I, you know it had a history on xbox with bioware obviously and um yeah Battlefronts have always been popular, you know, the recent ones, you know, whatever. Um, and obviously the newest um, is Respawn, our boys, um, our boys and girls at Respawn, um, with, uh, what's it called? Fallen Order? Jedi Fallen Order? Jedi Fallen Order, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. And obviously that was that was class as well. So and there's a lot of space um, for develop, you know, for, to make games in, in the Star Wars universe, and I'm kind of into it, to be honest. Um, yeah. But... Obviously, I think a lot of people would be excited for the idea of a, of a Mandalorian game because it's, you know, it would be a bounty hunter game, and that would that's right in you know that's right up the alley of any everybody who wants to play a video game. Yeah, for sure. You could even do it almost like uh, Hitman style. Yeah, right. But exactly. Not, obviously, not like the changing of clothes. Mandalorian doesn't do that, but like <laughs> just that sort of you know, like you have a target, um, you know how you approach it in loads of different ways, all that sort of thing. Yeah, like going guns blazing or take him out smart, dishonored all that style sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah you, you could definitely see it sort of fitting into that sort of area as well. Um, in fact, that would actually be quite a quite a preferable area for me. That actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, um, and you're kind of just given a, a, a level and a sandbox to kind of take your target and how however you want to do that. Um, yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Make it. Yeah. Yeah, make it exactly. One of, <laughs> make somebody... what I just said. Yeah, exactly. Coalition, you better be making this, or I'll be. We'll, we'll be very disappointed. No, and we're a big deal. Only do gears. We're Coalition a big only deal. Do gears. No. To do anything else. Get them out. Let them do something else. <laughs> no. Only gears. Fuck Marcus Phoenix. Kill him <laughs> off. Um. 
Yeah, I mean, and then because there, there was a bit of a weird, there's a bit of a weird angle to this as well. In that, of course, of some of the studios that Xbox are doing that are making a new big IP that we know of and that we don't know what the IP is, is Zenimax Online, the makers of um, Elder, uh, Elder Scrolls Online. We know they're making a new IP and it's likely going to have an online element. Um, could that be something Star Wars based? I mean, it's not impossible. Um, yeah. I I can't imagine... I mean, maybe. You know, I was going to say... like, fit. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine how they would do it. Why they would want to take that risk coming off the back of like so many successful single player Star Wars games you know like Rene- Renegades yeah. has done quite well obviously and then Fallen Order did sensationally obviously and even Battlefront 2 has like wound up being a bit of a success as well um, yeah. so I don't know that's my player but it has a single player element uh, campaign as well so I mean it, yeah it's not impossible you know I could see like a, I could see a Star Wars MMO kind of thing and that being again pretty fucking sick like create your own Jedi kind of thing yeah alright yeah yeah, um, I think well, I see it fitting more into the other areas we spoke about um, a bit better, like single player um, stealth game. Yeah, for Mando yeah. that is, yeah, definitely. Or, or like, like you said, sort of coalition style action game as well, like um, single player uh, narrative and stuff like that. Like cover I think it kind of, yeah, almost. I mean, Mandalorians, he's got like jetpacks and all that kind of stuff. So there, yeah. there would be aerial combat and everything. It wouldn't for be sure. boosted to the ground. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think it kind of fits the bill for those ones a bit more than a, a, a an MMO, um, especially if it's specifically like people have said a Mando game is in development. I feel like that's quite a niche, smaller area of the Star Wars universe, and to expand that into an MMO, I think would be weird. I think if you're going to do a Star Wars MMO, they would just encapsulate everything that Star Wars. Like they they would include everything. Mm. They wouldn't just they wouldn't keep it solely to uh like the mandalorian like race of like warriors and stuff like that uh, yeah so that's to play around with yeah definitely but, yeah. i i just think it's i think it's one of those things that you know when you think about at least for me you know when i think about like a surface level it's like oh xbox is making a lot of um moves potentially with lucas arts to make star wars films um and sony are doing it with marvel you know initially like i was kind of like well that's not really I mean, I probably prefer Marvel overall, but the more I think about it, the more I'm like, well, actually, I do think the Star Wars universe is very cool, and I think there's a lot of space for some cool stuff in there. Not to say there isn't for Marvel, I mean, obviously there is, but it's just, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know, it's one of those things, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, no, that could be quite exciting. Yeah, like we say, a single-player Mando game, like maybe a shared world, you know, like, <laughs> you know, hell, like, loot-driven um Star Wars kind of Assassin's um, Creed Unity style um, that could be cool yeah well who knows man but it's so expansive the, the Star Wars universe you know and, and um, this leads on to our next story as well by the way but you know there, there is obviously like there's lots of universe to it, to it and lots of different angles like we all know what happened with um, what was it called Star Wars 1313 or whatever it was I don't know who was developing it but did you know the game I'm talking about it was like a uh, over the shoulder cover shooter like co-op cover shooter like in the Star Wars universe and you were like um like renegade like rebels maybe or something it, it, but it looked okay. great and everyone at the time was like really buzzed for it do, do you not know what i'm talking about i don't i can't remember no you'll have to um you'll have to look into it after the episode but yeah so star wars thirteen thirteen okay. is a cancelled action adventure video game that was under development by lucasarts the game would take a more mature gritty direction compared to the past star wars video games uh, and like 2002's Star Wars Bounty Hunter would emphasize fast-paced gadget and weapon-based combat tools uh, exclusive to Bounty Hunters rather than Force. So you were, you were two Bounty Hunters. Um, and the gameplay demo looked for it looked like really sick, everyone was buzzed, and then they cancelled it on in 2013. Uh, don't know why. Oh, okay. So things like that, you know, it's just like, it, there's a lot of stuff you can still do in the universe because you've kind of got your power fantasies with Jedis, you've kind of got any like multiplayer approach, you know, either with... Um, the rebels in the empire or really anything you know there's just so much to it there there really is yeah yeah so yeah I'm I'm like modestly excited to see what could come of more Star Wars or more games in the Star Wars universe maybe should I say oh yeah for sure yeah there's there's so much you can do with it Um, and there's so much you can do with like a like a Marvel universe as well I'd be happy with either or uh, preferably probably a bit more Marvel but um, 
yeah, they're both very untapped uh, areas. And yeah. you could pretty much make a game in any fucking genre with those sort of games. Exactly, yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, because like in my... I think, it's, I think it's just harder to put my finger on what exactly I would want from a Marvel game. Do you know what I mean? Because there's just so much of it. Like, there's so many different characters. I'm like, what I even, like, would I want? Yeah. Like, would I just want, like, a third-person, like, brawler? I don't know. Is that really worth it? Why not just do that with a new IP? Like, so then it's like, what do I want out of this? You know, I, I think that's why Insomniac ultimately went with Spider-Man, because it's like, we can make a Marvel property where the movement feels unique. Yeah. And that's kind of like your, that's your bread and butter for the, for the game. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's quite hard to picture what you'd want out of a Marvel game, for sure. Um I'm just like, sort of trying to think now. Exactly, yeah, yeah like, what what the fuck? Like, so, like, it's like, I would, if... Doctor Strange is probably, like, one of my favourite Marvel characters. And if, so, if someone announced a Doctor Strange game tomorrow, I'd be like, that is fucking sick, that is wicked. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Yeah, like... What do I do? Just, like, what is it? Like, what, what would you do? Like, because, yeah... It's with the Connect 2.0. Use your hands to do spells. Oh, that would make, yeah. Get me in. <laughs> And then I can pinch my screen and quickly oh zoom to another God. game. <laughs> the pinch is coming back. Let's go. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I I do know what you mean. Yeah, it's almost a bit overwhelming. And it, like something like you know, I I love Iron Man as well, but it's like Iron Man game is like is that really something? Like you know, I mean, obviously Iron Anthem Man, like nailed that kind of like flight and flight. Uh, yeah, sort of like. Uh, armor suit flying around kind of thing but then is Iron Man going to be open world would it be the same probably not so in that case again you're just kind of circling back to like a linear game except you're like an action adventure game but you're using an IP a Marvel IP and it's kind of then just like what's the point yeah so. it's, it's kind of like when you think about how Avengers released like that is kind of like what well, not obviously how it's released but the idea of the Avengers game is kind of like the only way I could picture an Avengers game working yeah um you know that sort of looter um looter sort of fighting brawling um colorful game and you run around in in a team of like four and stuff like that you know that that is the sort of only way i i could see it being done uh, obviously it just wasn't done very well i don't i could i could have seen i could have seen it being done in like a um like a left for dead kind of way like, add a couple of, like, cool new layers on it, you know, like, innovate the genre space a little bit. Third person, you know, imagine, like, Vermintide, Left 4 Dead, whatever, you know, you, like, go through these levels together with your mates, and you can, like, synergize, and that's, like, kind of the thing, and on higher levels, there's, like, like, more difficult enemies, you've got Galactus, like, coming down, you know, you've got, like, maybe 13 levels or whatever, I could see, and then maybe, like, you know, like, a, a light loot system, kind of like Vermintide does. Yeah. Rather than, you know, they've gone for, like, a Destiny approach, where it's, like, you know, loot every five seconds. Um, yeah, yeah. To, to like keep that that um, just keeping you coming back, but yeah, I can see something like that working. I mean, it's I mean, but yeah, it's yeah, just it's difficult. Right. It's difficult with this shit because when you've already got an stamp an established like IP, it's like well, what, what, you know, what, what fits this best? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, no, it's tough for sure. Cool. All right. So um, yes. So there was. <clears throat> Adding on to all the sort of Star Wars nonsense um, with Xbox, someone had pointed out that last year, at this time really, 24th of April, so you know, this time last year, um, is that ZeniMax Online Studios, the studio we just talked about, developers of Elder Scrolls Online, um, hired a Star Wars veteran for its new IP. Um, and it, this could be coincidence, might not be, but you know, this the, the dude works worked on... Battlefront 2, Jedi Fallen Order, um, um, I mean, Mass Effect, I mean, not relevant, but still, I mean, this could just be coincidence, or they had hunted someone who's made Star Wars games before. Yeah, it seems more likely that's what they've done. So it's, it's you know, it's, a, it's yeah, entirely possible. Him very specifically, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, based based on just that, that, that does, you know, that does kind of... Um, point a little bit towards maybe uh, an MMO sort of Star Wars. Uh, you know, they they hired that person for a reason, for a Star Wars related reason. Is, is, maybe. You know, 100%. I think it's a bit weird otherwise. Um, obviously, I don't know for certain, but that definitely seems like the likely outcome. It's sus. It's sus for sure. Very sus. Super sus. Um, 
and so some other insiders i mean again i mean special ed has been the um has been the star of the show today but he, he seems to think there's going to be some star wars related um uh news in partnership with xbox shown at e3 this year so there, there, there might be something to expect uh this year and he also said that if there is something that's shown it's a high republic game which might be exclusive to Xbox. I didn't know. I don't really know about Star Wars. I'm like a casual fan. You know, it's pretty cool and all. Original yeah. tri- trilogy, pretty cool. Prequel, cool, pretty shit, but still pretty cool. You know, new trilogy, pretty shit, but also still pretty cool. That's all yeah. fine. Rogue One, sick. All the games, pretty sick. Um, yeah. And I don't know what the High Republic is. So I had a look. Let me give you a synopsis for those people out there who also don't know. Um Star Wars The High Republic is a storyline of the Star Wars media franchise set during the quote-unquote High Republic sub-era of the Age of the Republic, set 200 years before the events of the Skywalker saga and 800 years after the fall of the Old Republic. Now, if you're like me, uh, I didn't know what the Old or New Republic was. So, you know, this timeline is I'm already fucked in knowing, like, where we are in this timeline. But I, I know I know Luke Skywalker, and I know that this is 200 years before that. So that's kind of my point yeah. of reference, and I can work backwards from there. Um, so in, in universe, the initiating event of the sub-franchise, so of the High Republic, is, quote-unquote, the Great Disaster involving antagonistic space Vikings... That's what it says. Ooh. I'm reading it straight off the Wikipedia article. Known as the Nihil, maybe? Nihil? Nihil? Yeah. N-I-H-I-L. Um, and then the subsequent intervention of the Jedi. So, I mean, if pre-Luke Skywalker Star Wars, a catastrophic event, space Vikings, and Jedi intervention doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will, because that all sounds pretty sick, if you ask me. It does um, sound pretty cool, yeah. That And the, so so far, they've just done, like, um, comics, you know, for... It's been going on for a while, uh, but it's all been received really, really well. Um, I think there has been a couple of, like, sh- web shorts online. Um, and due to the success, they're like, yeah, sure, let's get someone to make a game about it. Um, so if that is true, and Xbox are working on a game for this... You know, give it to me. Just like I said, it's um, there's just a lot of universe to explore with Star Wars. So it's um, whether it's that or it's Mando. You know, I just there are there are things there which are cool, man. I just think it works. Yeah, cool. yeah, for sure. I'd love to see something like that. I mean, I appreciate the summary as well because I'm I'm very much like you, a uh, very casual fan of Star Wars. Yeah. Um, pr- pretty much exactly what you said is exactly my Star Wars um, knowledge as well. Uh, I'd probably say Rogue One is like my favorite movie too. Um, yeah, Rogue I really enjoyed. Sick. I really enjoyed Rogue One, and obviously I've watched Mando. Uh, I haven't watched season two actually. That's still on my list. But I watched oh, yeah, is it? Yeah, season two's been out for a while now. Yeah, I'm trying uh, to convince Beth uh, Beth to watch it with me. So, um, yeah, I okay. I think, and I think I've been successful. So I think we are going to watch it soon. Um, nice. Just yeah. say how cute Baby Yoda is. That's well, it. there is this, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you, so you've watched season one, have you? And now I haven't watched, I haven't watched it at all. Oh, you haven't watched any of it? Oh, no, no, well, no. yeah, just Baby Yoda is fucking cute. Beth, Beth <laughs> would love Baby Yoda. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm losing you a bit. You're like, you're not, not you're muted, maybe? Hmm technical issues all right i'm just gonna pause the show guys uh we'll be right back okay we're back everyone sorry yeah uh, what... my headset's exploded um yeah no i was basically just saying that um that yeah we were talking about mando and um how it's great and awesome and i'm a very casual star wars fan uh just like you um but yeah based on that sort of summary and um what the high republic is and stuff like that i would i would uh, definitely like to see a game on that that'd be pretty pretty damn cool um yeah although i mean this is in regards to this isn't in regards to the the xenomax online working on it right well maybe it it is like who the fuck knows like honestly literally who knows it'd be quite interesting to see how that sort of concept that sort of timeline i'm trying to picture could fit into like an uh, an mmo um i mean i could see it yeah i i i could see it working more than a a a recent timeline with like well involved in everything let's think about their other game it's also i thought i had a few points but i only have one um (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I have my fingers ready to go, like counting them out. Better be a good point. <laughs> Well, the other get the other MMO also takes place as a before the main franchise timeline. Elder Scrolls Online takes place like 500 years before the events of like Skyrim or something, doesn't it? Or it, it maybe even further than that. I know it's like way back. Yeah, yeah, it is. Boom, confirmed. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, it could work. It, it definitely could work. Like I said, I I, I think it would work. Um, from a, a timeline predating uh, Jedi and all that sort of stuff yeah. um, coming into play. I think it would work better working from a timeline like that than a more recent one. Because um, Jedi is always that weird thing. Like like you said, it's like a power fantasy, isn't it? It could be mm-hmm. very hard to balance into a video game or to put in. or um, Because, you know, if, if you don't give the player enough tools, and then they're like, I'm a fucking Jedi, why am I so damn weak? Or if you yeah. give them too much, and they're like, oh, "I'm a Jedi, I do everything," you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, 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 it is a power trip. It's a power fantasy, so uh, it could definitely work at, at a timeline not including those. Um, so yeah, yeah that, that could be really cool. Right? Yeah, ex- exactly. And I, I, you know, I do think oh, we, we don't really know because we don't have enough enough sort of like sample size really i mean i don't know what have they made any other games or it doesn't matter but you know i you know i think we we all assume that their next game is going to be an mmo kind of thing i mean it's obviously their bethesda's like multiplayer team and that's well and good but in my head i'm thinking that they'll more lean towards like a shared world kind of thing i don't know why they would like put themselves through an mmo when they could just make like a very now that they're owned by xbox just make like a very tight focused destiny like you know what I mean in terms of like the infrastructure and the multiplayer elements um, yeah like they're, they're they've proved to be popular um, whereas you know MMOs because then Elder Scrolls Online came to PC first didn't it? and then it came to consoles eventually so like they were like primarily a PC developer who like started putting stuff on consoles um, yeah. but now you know that's not well, I mean, I guess I don't know, but I'm assuming that that's not going to be the case. I'm assuming they're going to be developing primarily for consoles and then PC second, or, or both as much as one another, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to answer your question, they they have literally only done Elder Scrolls Online. Have they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I think they've they've done like a, I think it's like an iOS game or something called Commander Keen. <laughs> Oh yeah, Commander Keen. I remember seeing that E3. That was a weird yeah, looking game. I think they worked on that or developed that entirely. Um, but yeah, apart from so, essentially <laughs> just Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least in my eyes. Yeah. Um, the AAA so, yeah. blockbuster, Commander Keen. What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> Sounds like a fucking serial. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it really does. Um but yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, we are. We're just assuming based on their history and what they've worked on. Um, I think it's safe to assume uh, a studio that is solely developed uh, just an MMO would probably stick to an MMO and what they do best. Because ESO is, is good. It's a good game. It's very well received um, yeah. in the community and reviewed. You know, it has, you know, they, they clearly know what they're doing um, and are quite talented in that genre. So they probably will stay in that area if they were to do anything star wars related but exactly yeah yeah. it's all speculation it's all yeah i mean it's it's all lovely wild speculation yeah yeah i mean at the very least it's going to be a multiplayer game i mean having fucking to say that i'm assuming commander keen is a multiplayer game i don't know so we'll wait and see hop on it after this podcast (laughs) yeah we'll wait and see so you know i sent you a picture midweek um of like emojis do you remember you sent me many are we talking the under 18 the not safe for work or are we talking um oh <laughs> yeah let's maybe just stick to the the safe for work stuff for now. yeah okay yeah, yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah so you, you sent me a picture with all the fucking emojis yes i do remember this yeah that's right and like insiders are just having a time of their life at the moment um you know whether it's jez corden or clobril um on twitter um 
and they're just teasing and stuff and obviously we've we spoke about like the whole typhoon thing and there's been like dragon emojis flying around as well it's all getting yeah. fucking wild it's like tractors and stars yeah. and... <laughs> well tractors was that, was that like an israeli <laughs> flag where was that <laughs> that was mexico so like the other the stuff mexico. was the other stuff yeah. was forza horizon 5 mexico the other one was starfield Israel, what's wrong with, with, with the tractor um oh stop oh my god i only just got that star and then a track yeah star. yeah that's For right fuck's sake, I'm an idiot. <laughs> then, yeah. so yeah there was that and that's like you know we thought oh that's going to be a tease of what's at e3 kind of thing um and then there was another one which i don't think is a tease of what's going to be e3 but just teasing for teasing's sake um and so the story is developed throughout the week um and supposedly io interactive who have developed obviously hitman one hitman two and you know the critically acclaimed hitman three um are supposedly working with xbox on a triple a fantasy game um and they don't they haven't made fantasy games before as far as i'm aware um and yeah, this seems to be what everyone's referring to when they're talking about Dragon. Their project seems to be referred to internally as Project Dragon. This is quite far out. It's like, you know, early on. But, you know, just to get sort of a taste of what we're looking at. Um, the head of IO Interactive said, Without going into too much detail, we have a third universe that we're actively working on, which is a bit different and absolutely a love child. It's something our core people, our veteran staff, have been dreaming about for some time. And what we do know from again from insiders is that it's early in development it's a triple a project and it's a large medieval-esque world with dragons Ooh. sign me up <laughs> yeah i'm in i put my email uh, yeah. yeah i'll crowdfund it by myself yeah, i'll do it Scalebound, um, i'm calling it they're reviving it yeah and so just to top it off it might have multiplayer elements and jeff grubb added that it's a behind the back diablo style game Ooh. So, I know. Okay. There's a few interesting things sprinkled into the mix there, isn't it? Yeah, that sounds very interesting. I mean, anything with dragons and a Diablo style, and yeah, hell, with, sounds appealing. You know, right? Enough, enough funding, and in fact, that it's a triple A sort of project. Yeah. Um, sounds sounds great. Sounds fantastic, yeah. based on those little nuggets of information. Yeah, exactly. Uh, again, it's not, it's not something we'll see for a while, but um, you know, we'll hear more about it, you know, over the over the years, really. But um, yeah, I mean, these guys are talented. Um, good choice of partnership. Really can't fault that at all. Um, I, I really want to play Hitman Three at some point. It's one of those things that if it goes to Game Pass, I'll be all over it. But I probably won't drop money on it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, um, I'm the same. But I mean, I know. Yeah, I know it reviewed really well. Um, I wanted to kind of uh, bounce off that as well because. Um, we, we've all known that it's actually getting a bit ridiculous. Like, it's getting absurd how many RPGs Xbox are now developing, you know. It's like that that clip of um, Michael Jordan, you know, from the from his documentary, and he's like... And I took that personally, <laughs> like, because it was like the Sony had come off the back of the PlayStation 4 yeah. with, like, RPG after RPG, you know, nailing it, um, and Phil was just there with his checkbook, like... <laughs> and I, and I, I took that RPG. personally. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, RPGs too, bitch. Yeah, exactly. And like just of what we like know of, we know and this was pointed out on Reset Era, um, that Xbox have like seven or eight RPGs in development at the moment. Like it's fucking bonkers. Like, you know, Obsidian have like two, maybe even three just by themselves, because they're like I said, they're all maniacs. Um <laughs> in Exile are doing their own thing after the back of Wasteland. Um so that'll be a while out. Supposedly they have a second team, so that'll probably be another one. So we're looking at five across two teams already. You know, Coalition is supposedly working on other stuff. Bethesda, you know, we've got Arcane, yeah. uh, Elder Scrolls, you know, they're going to be doing their own sort of like RPG sim type stuff. Um, there's more I'm obviously I'm obviously forgetting, but um, that's not including most of Bethesda or um, or any like publishing deals. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, so it's crazy. And so, like, on this forum that was, you know, where somebody had posted and said, um, you know, Xbox have like seven or eight RPGs in development, and that's nuts. And Insider chimed in and said, it's actually about 10 or 11. <laughs> so, like, this is crazy. <laughs> so, like, they're, they're really going to have such a strong foothold on, um, like, Western RPGs um, in the mm. next sort of five years. Um, Fable, I don't know how I forgot Fable. Um, oh, yeah. Hellblade 2, you know, things like that. So. It's going to be 
a really sort of powerful place to be. Um, and this is like kind of coming Tell, home, is really. Is like considered an RPG, not an action? Depends who you ask. I, I, well, cause I think, I get, I'm, I'm kind of just pulling this out of my ass, but I think Hellblade 2 will lean more into kind of an RPG game. But you're probably right, Hellblade 1 probably is more of like... It's like a Rise kind of game, right? Action, adventure. Like action, adventure. Yeah. Hack and slash. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. But yeah, I, don't know. I think but, yeah. it will. I think it will have more of our, more RPG elements to it. But um, if it's just going to be Hellblade, but more, um, yeah. So yeah, you know, and it's, you know, that the 360 was known for being like a powerhouse for RPGs. You know, like it had um, Morrowind back in the day. It had like exclusivity deals with uh, Oblivion. Uh, I'm trying Lost Odyssey. I know it's a JRPG, but um, yeah, yeah, I know I know it had a lot. Um, so yeah, if you like RPGs, it's certainly ramping up, and I know we're not there yet, but pff, the dam's gonna bust soon, and so yeah. am I. <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna bust at the same time as the dam. <laughs> awesome. Oh, but like this is it's crazy. Yeah. This is kind yeah. of like because because it, there are supposedly quite a lot of Xbox are working on quite a lot of multiplayer games at the moment as well, which obviously. Very exciting for me. Multiplayer games aren't popular. I say that. They're not like in vogue, you know. They're pop they're obviously like critically and commercially successful, but like online, nerds don't like multiplayer games. Um mm-hmm. at the moment. It's just not popular when obviously, you know, it was you know, early two thousands when COD and everything was going on. For whatever, you know, I, I understand the criticisms, like, I understand why that's the way it is at the moment. Fine. Um and this is just kind of my answer to that, is like Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, there are 10 <laughs> RPGs that are going to be coming that we know of, and that's completely crazy. So, everyone's going to be happy, um, hopefully. Um, so, we'll wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, as I'm as I'm speaking of RPGs, I, I guess you'd call it an RPG. Um, Elden Ring. Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring. There was a leaked uh, image yes. of perhaps, of possibly... Um, a worldwide reveal on the 14th yeah. of June, which would line up with Ooh. E3 time. Um, but this is from 4chan. Take it with a pinch of salt. 4chan is oh, known for God, being... 4chan. <laughs> known it's for being real. questionable. Um, and it does... You know, If it is real, there's obviously the Xbox logo there, which means they um, secured uh, marketing rights for it, which I think we did think that, that was the case anyway, because I think they had... I think it was on their show, on their platform that they first showed it off. So, yeah, anyway. So, nothing really more to speak about it. I mean, I know you think it's going to be coming out this year, but it's not. This Sorry. year. <laughs> Revealed in June, released in July. <laughs> and, um, well, even worse, actually, mate, there's, um, FromSoft's parent company, I can't remember their name, um, said, they said in the financial report, so you know like shareholders and whatever soz uh like elder rings it's gonna get delayed a few times probably <laughs> it's just a bay it's just yeah, a bay do you think thing. yeah yep, just a surprise drop out today bay. yeah, yeah. Uh, mate yeah no it's not coming out <laughs> I can't even, <laughs> ever I kid myself anymore i'm losing sleep over it it's not coming out <laughs> it'll come out next year i made a bad pick on the fantasy well, I'm, fantasy critic i'm glad you can whatever yeah, I'm, acceptance is the first step, dude. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I can sleep tonight now. I hope you can. I really do. Be ideal. Okay. Um, as a like, so there was some stuff about. Um, there was a blog post that went up about you know the Xbox said oh, so this is our commitment to PC and all of this and all of that. Um, and obviously they had the Age of Empires event a couple of weeks back as well. Um, but there we know that they're wanting to do a big overhaul to the Windows Store. <clears throat> and this is really big PC news and like you know any regular listeners know that we're not really PC gamers but we you know Xbox shares a platform with PC now so we're we're in-laws and you you're going to have to accept us yeah even if we accept me yeah even if we keep eating the chocolate from the cupboard just <laughs> you're going to have to accept us yeah. um it's cut they're cutting that the amount of profit they take from games down from 30% to just 12 um and I think the Epic Games Store has this exactly as well. Um, I.e., you know, it encourages devs to 
get stuff on their stores more because they get a larger uh, slice yeah. of the pie um mm-hmm. which is a pretty big deal to be honest um and it's a big difference from 30 to 12 yeah exactly it's ridiculous it's extra 20 percent, basically yeah it's insane um so it's, do you know, and, and it's somewhat nice to see this because I know they've been a lot more chummy with Steam on stuff, and obviously Halo Infinite is going to be releasing on Steam. But I think it is good that they invest in their own platforms instead, and just stop relying on other platforms to do the job for them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I say this, you know, after they do that with like Mixer and Groove and whatever, and it everything just dies and they just leave it to die. But if they're really like serious about focusing on PC, like they need to have their own storefront, they need to get good at that and. Like Steam needs competition, man. <laughs> like it, yes. so that sounds good. To I know, I know Epic Games has been doing a good job with that as well, but you know, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it sounds great. Um, like you said, it just encourages more people, um, yeah, to maybe choose that over uh, something else like Steam or Epic. But I mean, that's still such a hard choice because Steam and Epic are just oh, they're, they're just giants, titans, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it was the same situation with Mixer and why Mixer failed. Like everything about Mixer was great on paper, but people, people just—it's just in people's brains to just—they they hear the word stream and they go to Twitch. You know, like yeah, it's just it's just it's just in our fucking DNA at this point. <laughs> um, so it's so, it's so hard, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, you know, it's 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 a it's a good move to make, um, I think, and we'll just see how it plays out. But it, regardless, it's it's going to be a slow burn. It's it's going to take a while. You you you're not suddenly just going to be like, oh my god, like it's now amazing, um, Windows Store or or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it's going to take a long time, re- regardless of this change. But nice. Yeah, I mean, it, I like it. It's if it hasn't already been abundantly clear. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's been it's been this way from like 2018 like when the xbox started making purchases and started moving towards like pc as well that they're in this like they're making long plays you know there's no like yeah. oh let's buy up every publisher and like you know, buy up like a load of games to release this year so like they're not doing that they're not really interested they're, they're this is something they're clearly committing to for the next 20 years you know we're considering we're now in like you know we're halfway through 2021 and we still haven't really started seeing the effects of like all of these acquisitions they've been doing over the last few years few years you know it tells you that this is something that they they're investing in you know it's and this is part of that you know with the pc they wouldn't be taking less money for no reason you know they're doing this because they want a foothold in this so yeah yeah Yeah, no yeah i i I couldn't agree more yeah we're, we're we're making a lot of slow burn plays a lot of long a lot of um hands uh winning on the river um yeah. but you know uh i think i think it will it will help and i think it will do wonders but you know like i said it's um it will take a long time to even compete with something like steam or get people to to look in another direction um especially with pc gamers just being so picky with their clients and their launches and stuff like that they, yeah. they really just um but yeah it's it's a it's a good move i think at the end of the day it's yeah encouraging. i agree i agree and like you know at the end of the day it's even though we're not pc gamers you know we've spoken about this and like but well, we're not against it but it's money that feeds back into the xbox platform and that's not a bad thing and if you know if xbox again asked getting serious about streaming you know and down the road we're looking at streaming pc games to xbox and vice versa yeah this this is this isn't something I'm going to be seeing tomorrow, but it's something that's going to be, you know, I, I'm rooting for Xbox to succeed on PC is guess, I guess what I'm trying to say, even though yeah. I, I, I don't benefit from that right now. You know, I recognize that it feeds back into the platform and that's the good shit. Yeah. We're PC. We're bros with PC now. You know, exactly. Respect. Exactly. That's my homies. <laughs> I'm so white, it's unreal. Yeah, you are. Okay, right. so um, it, it, they, they took that chance, you know, that while the the iron was hot and they're saying, wow, we love PC, look at us go. Um, they dropped the newest Inside Infinite, which if you don't know, 343 are putting out a blog every at the end of every month and they talk about a, a certain um, part of Halo Infinite. I think we had audio last month, we had sandbox design the month before that, etc, etc. And there's always like fun, exciting stuff in there even again for someone who doesn't play on pc um from what i've read the reception to this has been really good uh you know they've spoken about loads of 
PC centric things that are going to be in the game like uh, widescreen support multi monitor support field of view they confirm field of view for a console as well actually which is fucking sick because the field of view in Halo 5 it. can fucking do one yeah, it's, it's like, so zoomed in there's a, there's a couple of times I've tried to go back to Halo 5 just like let's give it a go and it all plays really well but I'm like well, hang on a minute what the fuck like you can't see it's so weird it's like you're Spartan like it actually has blinders on yeah. I feel like the gun is in my mouth like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm carrying it in my mouth <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 very <laughs> the field of view is an issue. Um, so I love games that have field of view options. No, I I, I am, and it's like it's just it's just me being more and more of a snob. Uh, like with FPSs, it's like an immediate turn off if I can't pull the field of view out because yeah. it's. And I understand it's for like performance reasons, um, but like it's a it's a big deal for me. Like when they um. Before they did the uh, Series X enhancement update on Destiny, there were a few times I wanted to go back to Destiny, but I was just like, I just can't. It just feels so stupid, especially after playing Apex, which, you know, performs super, super well, and they has, since day one, always had field of view options. Um, yeah. So it's just anything less than that, that's like the gold standard for me. Anything less than that is just painful. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that's all good stuff. But yeah, it was it was received very warmly. Lots of PC focused stuff, lots of accessibility stuff, um, and um, a couple of extra screenshots as well. I think I sent some over to you, didn't I? Um, yes. Yeah. Where like generally stuff is looking so much better. All the environments are looking really nice. Some of the enemy models still need a bit of work. Yeah. But you know. It's it's been what six months since the delay, and they've still got six months to go. So mm. I'm not worried. You know, if we're still six months off and the environments are looking this nice, I'm I'm really not worried. Like some of the, it genuinely look really nice. I I think it's reasonable to have like curbed expectations of like this isn't going to look like Ratchet and Clank because that's releasing just on PS5. It's going to be a cross-gen game, and it's going to look good. I'm not expecting it to blow my mind. But Gra graphic. Halo, Halo has never been a graphic lead, like a graphical showcase. As long as it's performing well um, and it looks good in motion, and like you know all the animations are there and shit like that, you know whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I, I can agree more. <clears throat> yeah, it's never been a, a proper um, graphical <laughs> show stomper or, or or anything like that. Yeah, um, and I don't. And I, I don't... think a, I think a lot of Halo fans would agree with you. It's just it's all about the gameplay, how it looks, um, and the style yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they they go for a very well, at least in the past, um, they you know they go for a very colourful style and a very. Um, it's like colourful and clean. It's yeah, just like clean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, if it has that, then I'm happy. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, you know, I am I am ultimately still hoping it will be a good looking game. Like I'm not going to say that it can't, it couldn't disappoint me. Like if it came out and there were textures looking like shit here and there i would still be a bit disappointed but i'm not expecting it to look like some of the games that sony have put out just for their next gen system because i think that's just an unrealistic expectation um yeah xbox are going to have graphical showcases probably even this year you know there's flight simulators going to come out and that's going to be ridiculous if forza horizon 5 does make it this year again exactly. even even if that is cross-gen it's still going to look crazy yeah so um good, yeah. like if horizon 4 still looks like are you, are you'd be hard pressed for me to call that to call that like a current gen. Like it looks unbelievable. It's glorious, yeah. Um, Starfield, probably, you know, whatever if it comes Video, out this year yeah. or early twenty twenty two. It's Bethesda stuff, so. But again, this depends on like where it's launching. I doubt. I mean, maybe like maybe if it's like quarter one twenty twenty two, they do just say, we've just been doing it for the Series X and PC. Like, oh, sorry, Series S and X. Um, I think that could yeah. be a like, really good looking game but I mean like you, you know like yeah I like we say Bethesda, um, Bethesda Game Studios games are never like graphically um, they're a bit rough around the edges they are they look good they're good looking games but it's not because of like the um, I don't really know how to describe like the acid like the quality uh, yeah like the design is really good but like the actual performance and like quality of the stuff in there yeah. isn't show stopping yeah, um, just like Skyrim, basically, you know. yeah, yeah. Just, just don't be that gamer that just kills an elite or a brute and just gets a sniper and zooms <laughs> in on their head. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so bad. You know, like it's every game will look bad if you do that. Yeah. Just fucking, if the game looks great in motion, as we've said, then so be it. You can fucking stop and zoom into anything and see pixels. 
stop yeah, i could do exactly. that in god of war don't make me do it because i <laughs> will so yeah uh yeah exactly yeah no for sure for sure and it is a shame because now that there is like a bit of a you know a magnifying lens over everything 343 is putting yeah. out you know, they, they it's i don't envy them at all cool. i really yeah. don't envy them at all like if you think about if you actually think about like the goliath of the task that they have they've got to make the like the expectation i would i would go as far to say that the expectations that 343 have on their heads for infinite's release is like maybe one of the it's gonna the expectations of it are higher than like maybe any other game in the last 10 years cyberpunk was obviously really high i think infinite's above that i think it's probably more stressful than being the president of the united states I, it must be comfortable <laughs> like making halo infinite yeah every single decision you make like there was just that whole thing was about like the black undersuits do you remember that and the halo community was like i can't no yeah. Yeah, they were like halo and they, they need to have black undersuits it's like oh yeah. my god it's i just, just thought so weird. Yeah. i just maybe thought that they wouldn't need that I just maybe thought that would be stupid, but that's really? fine. <laughs> yeah, you kind of just look at those sort of comments and you're like, really? It's re- really passionate about it. I guess you can call it passion. That's, yeah, <laughs> something. It's definitely something. It's something I think the something polite way is saying it's passion. Yeah. That's what <laughs> all the yeah. devs say. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's crazy. You know, they've got to hit, like, I was, I was speaking to some of the, um, some of the people on, on some of Xbox era the other day, you know, like, they're expected to churn out what a 90 or above metacritic game really given that halo 4 and 5 are both like 85 yeah and everybody (laughs) says that they're shit heaps so they've got to put out a 90 plus metacritic game which is like a killer single player game an innovative and like show-stopping forge um a multiplayer which is new but also not new new but classic (laughs) but new but classic they've got to get the art style down for every, like for Halo 2 but also Halo 3 Halo 1 and also a little bit of Halo 5 because it's a continuation but a spiritual reboot yeah god I just don't poli- and they got to polish textures for an 8 times sniper scope up close <laughs> exactly yeah, and they've got to fix Craig like I just don't envy them at all like all of that they've got to do all of that you know the expectation like I said it's just the expectation of it all um my, my, my fingers are across for them. I mean, it's shaping up well, and they've had you know they've had the extra year to pull it all together. Hopefully, um, yeah. but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. You know, we'll, we'll keep touching on Infinite as the weeks go by. But um, it was a cool little um, inside Infinite. Oh, and that was the last thing. They, they or the last two things rather. They they confirmed that they'd be at E three. You know, no real surprise there. They said, oh, we know a, a picture is a, worth a thousand words, but. Uh, a clip or gameplay oh that's worth 10 million whatever it's just a cheeky little thing so they're I mean they're obviously yeah. going to be showing gameplay at E3 um, which yeah. we're, uh, we're all excited to see we need to see more of more of that um, excited yeah hopefully multiplayer people have been talking about multiplayer flighting like demo or whatever um, so maybe then and there was also a job listing recently that was found about someone that was working on logic puzzles for Halo and this is obviously like new territory for Halo like logic puzzles um And if you've been following, if you've been using your keen gamer eyes to follow what Halo Infinite has been doing, it's really been trying to take influence, it really seems like they've been trying to take influence from Breath of the Wild. Um, Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's a step in a different direction for Zelda to go in more of a sandbox. Halo has always been a bit sandboxy, so it's kind of a, it's a real perfect fit. And like, if there's, if they're going for like, kind of, you know, shrines, you know, or whatever, um, I could see that working. It would be maybe a bit more difficult to implement because you're like on a first person perspective, but it would like break up the gameplay if there were genuinely like bits, you know, you could wander off and find like, you know, a Promethean tomb and like you and your buds have to, you know, either do like a combat trial or, and that would give you upgrade points or whatever to like upgrade your equipment. Um, things like that. I could see that all working really nice, like using the grappling hook to like pull yourself up to a ledge, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, though, cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, who knows what lies on a, on a Halo ring? <laughs> who knows? Literally. Who knows? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I could see that being quite cool. So that's um, that's Halo for this month. And really, the only thing I wanted to touch on as the sort of wrapping up today is that there was um, an insider because it, as we know, it's not an episode of Quick Resume if I don't at some point bring up Starfield. Um, and there was a reset yeah. error insider who said that he that that. 
Starfield isn't releasing it in 2021. Which broke my little heart, and I thought about not speaking about it because it upsets me greatly. It just means you have more episodes to speak about it every week. Yeah, until do you know what? Now. Do you know what? You're right. <laughs> You're absolutely you to, right. You just get to mention it for a, for a very long time now. Yeah, and true. I look forward to hearing it. And I can just... It might I can, be my last episode. <laughs> I can just bring up like... But like dog shit, just tiny bullshit news. Like, oh, we've got a leaked image of a rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's, it's fun stuff. So I mean, who knows? But yeah, that's um, that I just I just wanted to bring it up because it's tradition. Fucking fight me. Oh yeah, it wouldn't, uh... be, uh, it wouldn't be an episode of our podcast without that. But yeah, it's a, it's kind of a shame not seeing it this year. I actually genuinely thought we would. Um. But, hey. Yeah, I mean, we, we spoke about like the whys and the whats before, haven't we? You know, with with Halo coming out, if they think that that's going to be the Titan that it is, you know, they're not going to want to cannibalize that. And like out yeah. of Starfield and Halo, the one that's not moving is Halo. Like the foot, like their foot's in the sand with that. You know, they're they're, yeah. they're dug in. They're not delaying it again. Um, they need to get it out. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's the wrap up. That's the wrap up. That's the wrap up. Um, nice. Any words to add before we um, fuck off? I'm hungry. Yeah. No, Where am no I? Words. There's I don't no know. words for me. Okay. I'm about to. I'm about to chow down on some tacos, bro. Are you? Yeah. I can't tell. I think. I think I'm actually getting a bit sick. <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell if I'm hungry. Yeah. All I've had like since. All I've had today is a couple of tiger tongues, which are just strawberry fizzy laces. Oh, deck. I know. Come on, you're better than that, dude. It's I'm quarter not. past four. I think I might get um, a Burger King, to be honest with you. Do it, man. You've had a you've had a you've had a long weekend. You know, you're back to work tomorrow. You just activate <sighs> chill mode, dude. Activate chill mode. <sighs> Little yeah, inside us to our lives, guys, before we wrap up. The podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah I know. Is, I'm gonna eat tacos and Dex gonna get a Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> we're gamers. Yeah, we're gamers, man. That's what we do. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, thanks for taking the time um, this afternoon. Hope you have a lovely week. Um, we'll be back next week with um, some stuff, I'm sure. There, there, there's Morfield. already teasing happening. Starfield. Starfield. Yeah. Definitely Starfield. More frame rate uh, more frame rate boosted games. So I hear. On the grapevine, but we'll see. Ooh. You know, I know. 50 nice. of them, apparently. Mm. Fuck. I know, I know. But, you know, whatever. We're not going to talk about that now because I'm yeah. done, quite frankly. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, sick. All right. Nice. Take care, everybody. Love you. Bye. Bye.